I'm Chuck, this is What is the Wheel, and today we're going to look at the Comet Torque Converter clone. If you're like me, you thought a go-kart would be a fun, cheap project. So you went out and searched Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, and bought yourself an old go-kart. It needed a new motor, so you bought a new motor, and then you thought, hey man, I need to have more power. So you bought a bunch of hot rod parts and put them on there. And then the tires were looking raggedy, so you bought some new tires for it, and those new tires made those rims look raggedy. So you got some bright, shiny new rims for it. The next thing you know, you spent $1,000, and you still need a torque converter. So you go look at Comet Torque Converters, which is the name for torque converters for go-karts, and you're like, good grief, I'm not spending $200 on one of these things. E eBay's got one for $70. Bucks. So you bought the $70 one, which is exactly what I did. But there's some differences between this knockoff and a real Comet. All right, I've got it all apart, down, barring, yanking the bearings out of it. And we have this main plate. It's webbed on the back side. Since this is a knockoff, this is an interesting thing with the, with the knockoff comets. Uh, you can see all of this webbing supporting this uh, bearing housing here. There, are, there is no webbing right here. And that is great on a Predator motor because on the Predator engine right here, you've got a piece sticking out for your uh, oil filler and it will interfere with the gussets that come on a genuine comet. You would have to grind those back in order to clear this. And uh, even with the, uh, the Predator, or with this, with this knockoff model, you can see I have cut the tabs off the top of the oil filler because there's just not enough room in there. It's a, it's a very snug fit. So that's actually kind of a nice thing on these the knockoff models, that they you can, you can bolt it straight up to your Predator motor with no, uh, not without having to grind anything. The next thing we want to look at is the driven pulley. This pulley is, if you ever watch a video on how to adjust your uh, torque converter, this is the thing they're going to show you how to adjust. What they're going to tell you is to change the position of the torsion spring in these three holes or drill another hole to put more or less tension on the system. And which is true, it, it changes how quickly the sheave will come out and how quickly it will go in. So you can definitely make an effect on how the torque converter performs by changing the position of this torsion spring. Several people are like, oh, it's going to make it go faster. If you have a completely stock Predator engine, changing the torsion spring position to a lighter one might actually make it go a little faster because that spring is going to be putting less pressure on this movable sheave. You can see this thing moving right here. It's going to put less pressure on that movable sheave so it will go up into its highest position more easily. Whereas if you have it in a very stiff position and you've got a stock Predator motor that's governed, it may not ever reach an RPM that will pull the pulley, that will force the pulley under the on the driven side or driving side to a position where this pulley will come all the way out and give you a high gear. So it is possible that a lower RPM changing the position of the torsion spring will make it go slightly faster. But if you want your cart to go faster, the only thing that's going to make it go faster for real is to change the gearing. You want to, you've got to put a different gear on the axle. You got to put a bigger one on there. I'm a liar. You got to put a smaller one on there. You got to put a smaller gear in the back if you want the cart to go faster. You might you might get a mile or two by messing with this thing, but you're not going to. This is this is not the way to make your cart go faster. This is the way to make it perform better for the type of driving you're going to do. If you're driving it around in the woods and you do a lot of like on throttle, off throttle, constantly like slowing down and speeding up, you want this torsion spring to be pretty stiff because as soon as you let off the throttle, you want this thing to roll back down into the low gear position. If you were drag racing, you might want it super light because you, as soon as you get on the throttle and the, and the clutching part of it engages, you want it to ramp right up to the to top gear. But what I decided to do was 
just replace this spring because this is a thing about stuff made in China is they are great at taking something and making a thing that looks just like it. Uh, it may not functionally be exactly the same, but it will look the same. And so I've got a feeling that this red spring in here, which the 30s don't come with a red spring, I have a feeling this is just a random spring. This spring is not necessarily the correct tension for this. It might be super stiff. It might be super not stiff. So my what I'm going to do is put the stiffer yellow spring. This is a genuine comet spring. I've got the bag folder around here somewhere. This is a genuine comet spring. I'm going to put this in this driven assembly. And we're going to do that by taking the circlip out. And it's going to pop apart when we do that. Or no, it's not. It's supposed to pop apart. And so we've got our, our stock spring. We just want to check and make sure that the winds are the same because these springs do come in left hand and right hand. And they, this, they are the same wind. <clears throat> this yellow spring is definitely thicker than this red spring. And, and this, is a, this is a torsion spring. And what that means is this spring is not working this way. This spring is working this way. It's actually, it's a rotational spring. And this one is definitely beefier. To start with, I'm gonna put it in the middle of the three holes. This can be a little tough because you're gonna need to push down and spring this thing. The, your, you've got your, your pads and you've got your uh, profile here and you've got to rotate it around far enough to get that into position. And you also have to get this thing, this squared off or deed off taper to fit this as well. So we might have to use some movie magic here. I'm gonna film this whole thing. You're gonna watch the whole thing happen. I think something that will help is when you start, make sure that this is lined up with this. So you can push it straight down onto that center shaft before the real struggle starts, which is where you are trying to rotate this around. Like I said, this is not the correct position. You can see that. It looks like it's right. It looks like it's you know about to rest right on that pad. That is wrong. It's got to rotate around about what uh, uh, was it? Not 90 degrees, 120 degrees, to be in the right spot. It's got to go a third of the way around, which is going to be tough because the spring, like I said, it's a torsion spring. So it's it's you're fighting the rotation, but you're also fighting to push it down because it does still spring up. It still wants to spring up. This is the part where I question some of my life choices. This thing is super stiff, so I had to get creative. So this is what I came up with. I have a piece of 5 16 all thread. I've got a little piece of flat bar, drilled it out, put a nut on the bottom of it. It's gonna go straight through the bottom. I've got a much longer piece. Same thing, got a hole drilled in it to fit this uh, piece of all thread. We're gonna put our top cup on. I'm gonna put it in the middle position again. I'm gonna make sure that the deed portions are more or less lined up with each other just to make it a, the initial sticking together of it a little easier to do. I'm going to go ahead and put the snap ring on. Uh, these snap rings, they do have sides. Uh, one side will have a sharper lip and the other side will have a little bit of curve. You always want the sharper edge to be the loaded side. If that curved side, if it's got enough pressure on it, sometimes I actually pop the clip off. So we're going to put that on there. 
And the reason I'm putting this on here is because everything else is going to be snug down. I'm not going to be able to get this circlip in here afterwards. I'm going to push down. I'll line up my D's. Put my piece of bar stock on here. Put my nut on. Okay. Got it in place. You need to be sure and leave enough slack that you can actually get your shape past your pads. And then with this long bar, I can just rest the bar against my body. Whoop, I've got left out one part. I've got a, a pin punch. It's going to go in one of the holes that does not have anything in it. And the bar is going to work against it. And I can rotate this drum. And my body is holding this bar in place. So I can rotate the drum into position. And then once I get it past the ramps, past the pads, I can just push it down like that. And it's still gonna be a struggle. There we go. You gotta be, I'm telling you, you gotta be 100% certain you wanna use it, uh, <laughs> that yellow torsion spring. That rascal is snug. You see, I'm very, very close here. I'm going to take a chance. And the snap ring, watch this, I'm gonna shoot the thing across the shop, break the camera. The snap ring is not all the way down. But, if you just happen to have a big enough socket to fit over the snap ring, or fit over the your hub, you can pop that thing and get it back locked in position. And I'm a liar because it hasn't gone down in there yet. So simple, a baby could do it. Now we're gonna look at the driving pulley. Inside the driving pulley, we've got our centrifugal weights. These are zinc, they also make aluminum ones. The aluminum ones are lighter and therefore higher RPM applications because what this thing is going to do is with the combination of this, this weight, these counterweights and these springs, which are called garter springs, you're gonna establish the RPM at which the clutch engages. And same as I said before, the, these, this is a Chinese assembly. Who knows what the spring rating of these springs is? So I bought some Comet springs. I bought the blue springs, which engage at 2200 RPM. A stock Predator hits its torque peak at 2500 RPM. So just a little bit lower uh, it's going to engage just a little bit lower than the stock torque peak. Just in case, I bought a set of white springs also, which engage at 3100 RPM. Because this is a modified motor, I might find that it, I want it to engage at a little bit higher RPM. So we're just going to take our, we're going to struggle and get these things off here. These centrifugal weights really don't want to just slide off. So I'm going to pop the outer garter spring off first and see if it makes it a little easier to get this assembly off of here. And it's a wrestling match the whole way. Go ahead and pop this uh, other spring off to the bottom. See if that helps any. Maybe it'll come off. There we go. Look at that. Came right off like nothing. That was super easy. Okay. So these are your 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 two centrifugal weights. They've got pins running through them to keep them centered. And we're just going to apply the blue springs. These are the blue springs right here. Just bring them around. Lock them to one another. Go ahead and put the bottom one on first. And my reason for doing this 
is because I don't know what these springs are rated at. They, it's like they could be rated at to engage at a thousand RPM or five thousand RPM. So by using these springs, I've kind of got a known quantity. I know where I'm where I'm starting from. If you're wondering why they're called garter springs, I'll put a picture up and show you. Okay, that's done. That's it. Now we're ready to put this whole thing on the motor, which you've probably seen 50 videos of guys doing that, but I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway. All right, like I said before, when you install one, you've got to get this piece cleared off. The, you're going to cut the top of it off to give yourself some more clearance. If you look at here is the, the one that is not cut. Also, before you do it, make sure that you cut the top off of the one that does not have the dipstick on it because only one of these has a dipstick. Put that back on there real quick. All right, your assembly can be keyed however you need to go on there, but barring clearance. Obviously, you can't put it right here because the cylinder's in the way. But you can put this on here in whatever angle works for your application. If you need it on over here or up like this, you can do that. It does not matter. It's still going to turn the gear the same direction. So it does not make any difference. But what you're going to use is this motor is all metric except for these PTO mounts. The PTO mounts are 5 16 by 24 TPI, which is a fine thread SAE bolt. And you're just going to pick your spot that works for you and put your bolts in. And while you're putting them in there, you want to double check, make sure that you're not you're not getting any binding or anything like that. You're gonna not gonna have any kind of a problem that uh, where you're gonna break something when you tighten it up. There's probably a torque spec for these. I'll uh, highlight it on the. Uh, screen for you because I'm not sure what it is right now. It's probably going to be around 12 or 15 foot pounds. The next thing, it comes with a washer. I'm going to put this washer on here. I have seen some others that came with a spacer to space this assembly out. Mine did not come with a spacer. So I went to the hardware store and bought these. These look like washers. They're called machine bushings. Uh, that's what you want to get when you when you go looking for them. If you buy a three-quarter, if you end up needing them to space this correctly, which we'll talk about in just a second. But these machine bushings, they're three-quarter ID, so they fit right on here, but they're not huge. If you buy a three-quarter washer, it'll be so big it won't fit inside this hole. So you're looking for uh, machine bushings. In my case, I also made a spacer. Unfortunately, I thought this was a piece of three-quarter tube, and it's not, so it fits loose, so I'm going to have to do that again. But you want to get some of these machine bushings, because when you assemble this onto the crank, you want to be sure that your pulleys line up. That this, whoop, you want to throw the bearing across the floor. You want to make sure that your your bearing, your bearing, your flat sheave, driving flat sheave, lines up with your driven flat sheave. Let's see that there. They need to be because when you if you don't have you can see how it's off. They need to be lined up straight. You want to take anything for kind of a straight edge. I love using this aluminum stock. This is great for straight edges, and you're gonna. Put it on your flat sheave and you're going to bring your driving sheave out until it is they are even with each other they could be off a tiny little bit but they need to be pretty close so you want to have them make sure it's it's not it's not rocked make sure it's straight on there and then you're going to bring that out until it's flat and that will not only will it give you better grip for your belt but it will keep the belt from wearing 
it'll help your belt not wear. So we're going to put our spacer, which is the wrong size on there. You want to, if you, if you do happen to make one of these, make sure it's a three quarter and don't be an idiot like me. I don't know what size it is, but it was off. And we're going to put our couple of spacers on there. We're going to slide our pulley on. We're going to put our straight edge on and line it up. And because I did this once before I filmed it, I have it, it's lined up correctly. So we know that it's straight, that the belt is going to be straight when we put it on there. This bushing, I've seen some guys say not to use this bushing, but it, it'll be hard on the belt if you idle a lot and you do not have this bushing on here. This bushing is just something for the belt to rest against when it is not engaged. And you're gonna put that bad boy up on there and you can see how tight this is. And this tightness is probably because of this, I've got this super tight uh, dry pulley in here. So we'll get our belt on, get it up over. And it is really, really tight. Like that. And you can see how snug it is. It's like you, that's why this bearing is in here. This is the, or this bra, this uh, uh, bronze bushing is in here is to keep it from uh, uh, allow it to freewheel on your uh, uh, your pulleys. And I've also done a dumb thing. I have put this belt on here backwards. This belt is one direction, and I put it on there the wrong one. It actually is hard to see on camera, but it is beveled. And the pulleys, this pulley is flat. This inside sheave on this is flat. The outside is angled, beveled. Same thing with this one. This outside is angled or beveled. And it may actually fit on here a little better this way. But and you know what? I'm putting it on backwards again. There we go. Let's try this one more time. Okay. Oh, man. Yeah, it goes way easier that way. Look at that. Okay. So, got that on there. You've got your... This hub piece. It's, it's splined. It also has a square taper on it. That square taper, or D, double D taper, has to fit into here like this. Uh, this is one thing I don't like a whole lot. I wish these shafts were a little longer. There is not a ton of engagement for this part. So that part is going to go right there on the in the keyway. This is splined to slide right over that. Over, over this bushing right there. And this this is your inner uh, pulley right here. This is going to this uh, these zinc spacers or, or zinc weights, you can see they're angled and they're going to push against the angle of this cup and the angle of this and do this number right here. And that's what's going to cause this belt to come out to what is effectively a higher gear in the front and bring this floating sheave in and create a higher, smaller diameter gear in the back. So we'll line up our that. We're going to line up our the deed portion there. You have this piece which has a, a keyway in it that fits the keyway that is in this inner bushing. And then, which I don't have, you're going to put your bolt on and tighten this up. And uh, same thing as I'll figure out what the spec is. I'll just put it on the screen. I don't know it right off the top of my head. I was unprepared. So, after all that's said and done, you're, when you're setting this up, you're doing two things. You're figuring out what kind of, well, multiple things. You're figuring out what kind of actual riding you're going to be doing. If you're building a play cart to drive around in the woods, are for your kids, you want these springs to engage at a low RPM so that 
especially for like kids. You don't want it to engage at torque peak for little children. Um, you want it to engage at about the torque peak or a little lower for riding in the woods so that your the motor's not screaming when it does engage and just start spinning the tires. So you want to probably, like these are blue springs, they engage at 2200 RPM, they're probably perfect for that. In the back, we're still talking about like a woods cart or mini bike or whatever, something you're like, you're constantly revving up and down. You want either a stiffer spring or you want it in a stiffer spring position. And the stiffer, spring position, the further the, to the uh, counterclockwise the holes are, the, the stiffer the position is. So this is going to be your easiest position. This is the, the second hardest, because there's only three, and then the stiffest position in this final one. And with this stiffer yellow spring on here, this middle position is probably fine. Now, if you were drag racing, you want, and you've got a modified, especially this is with a highly modified motor, you're going to come up on your torque peak at a higher RPM. So you want a higher RPM spring, like my other springs engage at 3,100 RPM. And they make one that engages at 3,600 RPM, and with aluminum weights, you can go as high as a 4,600 RPM engagement. If you are drag racing, you want that thing to be spinning when the clutch engages. Just like if you watch guys at the drag strip, you know, they don't idle off the line. They rev that thing up and drop the clutch. Or in the case of an automatic, which also has a torque converter in it, but it's a fluid torque converter, they have what is known as a high stall torque converter. And that just means that the torque converter does not engage until higher RPM. And if you are drag racing or that kind of thing, you want that high RPM engagement. You want that motor to be up on its the, the hump of its torque when it when the clutch engages and it goes and you want this torsion spring to be light because you want the motor to wind from that low gear position to the high gear position as quickly as the engine can handle it so that you are going as fast as you can as soon as you can. All right, I hope that helped you out and explained a little bit of exactly how one of these torque converters works. If you have any questions, please leave a comment, and as always, like and subscribe. Everybody have a great day.